Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about tunneling problem in the quantum harmonic oscillator. Here you have the probability density for the ground state, first excited, second and third excited states for the harmonic oscillator, and this is going to be your classical potential that goes as a uh, x squared. These oscillations that we have are always respect to the equilibrium position. So positive values means that the bond is stretching, and negative values means that the bond is compressing. So these positive or negative with respect to the equilibrium position of that vibrating bond. Um, so at some point you are going to find, thinking classically, that there's going to be turning points where basically is the maximum extent where your spring can uh, stretch or on the other side that it can compress. Uh, so those two points are going to be your turning points, classical turning points. Uh, in the case of the first excited state you can see that these turning points are becoming larger just because your system has more energy. Second excited state even longer so the vibration is going to be stretching and compressing even more because, again, more energy and so on and so forth. So the, the physical distance between those turning points is going to be larger as the principal quantum number goes higher. Larger energy for your system, then that stretching and compressing can be uh, of larger magnitude as well. But one thing that is interesting in the quantum harmonic oscillator is the idea that past these turning points, you're going to still find probability density that immediately is telling you that there's tunneling in these type of problems. Very similar to what you had in the particle in a box, uh, with finite potential barrier, in this case, you're also finding the idea of tunneling. So in this particular case, since that tunneling can extend in either the negative or the positive direction, you're going to find that the total probability of finding this tunneling will have to be the addition of the probability density on the right side of your graph and the probability of tunneling from the left side of your graph. So uh, because of the symmetry of your problem, you can also say, well, I can calculate what is the total probability on the right side, and I can multiply that by 2 to uh, calculate the total probability, again, from the symmetry of your problem, if you look at these probability densities and the distribution they have with respect to the uh, equilibrium position. Okay, good. So now that, now that we established that, the formulation, remember that the uh, classical turning points are those where the kinetic energy of your system goes to zero. That means that the total energy of your system is your potential energy. That energy of that particular quantum state, then it's going to be the potential energy, which is equal to one half of the force constant times um, the displacement squared. And at this particular point, this displacement is that associated with the turning points depending on the principal quantum number that you have, the energy level of your system. Solving for that, uh, we find that the uh, the magnitude of that turning point can be calculated for the in the x-axis as the square root of two times the energy of your vibrational load divided by the force constant. And it's plus minus because remember again you have this symmetric type of problem. Okay. But in terms of the reduced variable that we've been using, chi, you can actually remember the way that we set up chi is related to the vibrational axis x through alpha. Alpha contains these parameters that defi defines your oscillator. So we can then put this expression in terms of the turning points in the reduced coordinate. With a little bit of algebra, you can arrive from this to this, which is a different way to set up my problem. But if you look at this one, and that's another one of the beauties of using this reduced coordinate, that the turning points can be very easily calculated just in terms of the principal quantum number. Here, of course, but you will still have to calculate the energy for that particular uh, level. But here, just referring to the principal quantum number, you can immediately look at the turning points in terms of the reduced coordinate. So with that, remember that we have this wave function that we can express easily or more succinctly in terms of that reduced variable, but if we're going to be changing our variable of integration from uh, variable x, the x-axis, into this reduced coordinate uh, chi, we need to make sure that we all are also changing dx into d chi. And then the equivalence from this definition of chi with respect to x is going to give me that dx is equal to alpha uh, d chi. That's very important to take into consideration because now I can calculate the probability that uh, my oscillator extends beyond the turning point in terms of the reduced coordinate with this formulation in which now I have to include alpha times d chi instead of uh, the original variable, the x-axis. And also I'm changing the, the interval of integration as well as the variable of integration to something that is related to chi. And this, um, the wave function, I can express it with all the terms that are related to that reduced variable chi. Okay, so that's the setup of the problem. Let's actually explore the solution for whenever we have uh, the ground state, that is the principal quantum number equals to zero, vibrational quantum number. So we can the first thing that we have to do is to calculate the turning point in terms of that reduced coordinate 
I'm just going to use the formula that we found for that turning point. So it's two times the quantum number, which is zero, plus one, the square root of that. So it's going to be plus minus one. Those are the two turning points. Uh, but I'm just going to calculate for one of them, and then I'm going to multiply by two to find the total probability, meaning the probability of tunneling to the left of this graph and to uh, to the right of this graph and to the left of this graph. Okay. With that, the probability of, of finding the oscillator beyond that turning point with respect to that uh, reduced variable is going to be equal to the integral of the from the turning point in terms of the reduced variable all the way to infinity of my ground state wave function square, which is the probability density, times alpha d chi. And again, remember this alpha came from the fact that we're changing the integration variable from x to chi. With that, I can express now the wave function of the ground state. This is my normalization constant. This is the Hartmut polynomial of uh, associated with the ground state, degree zero. So this is going to be equal to one. And that's my Gaussian function. So I do the proper substitutions. Uh, this one square, I'm putting this variable outside of the integration. I am left with uh, this integration from one to infinity of my function. When I integrate this part of my e equation, I'm going to find that this is defined in terms of the error function. And it's going to be equal to the square root of pi over two times the R function one. And I have here this integration variable that came out of the integration, uh, the integration. And uh, from the normalization constant, I had another alpha, so they cancel out with one another. So I have this expression just to solve. Now this one, um, you can find in tables, but you can also find it in, through software. Uh, in any case, this value is gonna give you about 0.14. And when you divide that or multiply that by one over the square root of pi, you end up with about 0 0.078. Um, now, the other way to find this is directly just canceling out this square root of pi. So the answer will be one half of error function of one. The error function of one is about 0.15. And divided that by half, you end up with these uh, same results, independently of how you're solving that problem. Then, from there, remember that the total probability is going to be equal to two times that. And with this, you end up having about 15.8% of probability. Okay, so how can we use a software in order to calculate uh, this probability? So let's use uh, Mathematica. Um, we are gonna be setting up the problem. We have the normalization constant that contains alpha, just as we seen it here. Um, then, but we're generalizing these in terms of the principal quantum number. Remember that that normalization constant depends on the vibrational quantum number. I'm defining here my um, wave function in terms of those two, uh, three terms, normalization constant, my Hermit polynomial of order uh, epsilon, and then my Gaussian function. Okay, um, the probability density is going to be the square of my wave function. Here I'm trying to solve this problem for epsilon equals zero, the ground state. Remember that the turning point is defined uh, through this formula, the square root of two times the vibrational quantum number plus one. And then here I'm calculating the integral to uh, find the probability that the particle extends beyond the turning point in the um, reduced coordinate from that to infinity, probability density alpha times d chi. So this is very important. Don't forget to uh, include the alpha that comes from the fact that you're substituting the x-axis by this reduced coordinate chi. So then I just am uh, evaluating that, multiplying that by 100, so I get it in terms of a percentage. And then to calculate the total probability, I just have to calculate uh, or multiply that by 100 and make it two times this integral for the total probability. Okay, once I do that, that's uh, what I was getting in my problem. Um, the results that I got are around 7% or 7.8% for uh, the, the single probability. And then when I multiply that by two, uh, I end up with about 15.7%. So this is another way which you can calculate it directly with Mathematica. Okay, I hope this is helpful and I will talk to you later.